coolest thing about doing a series about the Terminator is that we can explore areas that were never touched on in the feature film. How do we give the audience the feature quality roller coaster ride that Jim Cameron provided? These fans are going to have their fangs and their claws out if it's not good. If we don't keep up the level of work that's expected, we'll lose our fan base. James Cameron created the Terminator franchise. He directed and wrote Terminator 1 and then Terminator 2, Judgment Day. The new television series, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, starts two years after that. John, now, now. The origin of the show is we wanted to see what happened to Sarah Connor after the events of Terminator 2. Sarah Connor, put your hands on your head now. She's in a very desperate place. She's being pursued by law enforcement, and she's still worried about threats from the future. There are machines that can come after her. Thinking that they were able to stop Skynet in Terminator 2, they realized that they didn't, and it continued. Run! Run! She is protecting her son because he is the person who will form a resistance army to the Terminators. One of the things they decide in the pilot is to basically say, we're not going to run for the rest of our lives. We're going to go and find out how did Skynet come about. And so they come to our time, and they now are on a mission to stop Skynet. The challenge is how do we give the audience the feature quality roller coaster ride that Jim Cameron provided? What was important was to live up to what Jim Cameron had created. In other words, what was established in these huge blockbuster films, we have to replicate. Now, of course, in a television situation, you don't have the time, you don't have the money to create huge action and scope. And the one thing it takes is the meeting of the minds. It's the writers, it's our production designers, it's the effects, it's the action. And of course, what's also very important with Terminator is you have to live up to this history of the story that's been told. If we don't keep up the level of work that's expected with the Terminator stories, what's at stake is that we'll lose our fan base. These fans are going to have their fangs and their claws out if it's not good. If it's not not believable. People are going to be turning channels real quick. What we know is that people come back to the show because they're interested in the characters, because they're interested in Sarah Connor, in John Connor, and in Cameron, the Protector Terminator. And so the major thing that we did to make this viable as a television show is to make Sarah proactive. Go! Sarah is no longer Chase. Sarah is on the hunt. She's at war and she's chasing Skynet now as opposed to the other way around. She's got great depth, I think, that probably wasn't out there in the movies. The fact that she has got this very real issue in her life, which is she gave birth to someone she wasn't ready for and also happens to be the savior of the world. The hardest part about this show as an actor, when you've already had something laid down as a groundwork, you're having to keep that in mind. And so the sort of natural, instinctive process is harder to maintain. <laughs> me if you want to live. It was important to establish a sense of surprise with respect to who's going to protect John and Sarah Connor. So who's the least likely to do that? And that was, of course, a John Connor's classmate. Jim Cameron's idea originally for the Terminators is that they are infiltrators, that the whole reason these endoskeletons put on facades is to get close to humans. So there is no reason why a Terminator couldn't come in the form of a very beautiful, petite young woman. I think my favorite thing about playing Cameron is the fact that she is the most advanced Terminator so far, one who is extremely human in her characteristics and is better than ever before. It's setting up the basic idea, again, of the protector Terminator and the aggressive villain Terminator, but this time it's done in a way that wasn't tapped into in the films, which is what I kind of think is really interesting, is that she's very human, and it's going to be a really interesting relationship between John and Cameron. Stunts are crucial to what we're doing. Joel Kramer, the stunt coordinator, was someone that had done the Terminator films and coordinated Terminator 2, and this was a guy that I knew that he knew what good was. The Terminator film's the blueprint for what we're doing. 
And, you know, if we can't follow in the footsteps of what Jim set forth, we're wasting our time. And the nice thing about this is we're running the gambit on stunts. You know, everything from vehicle chases to crashes to really extensive fight sequences. Joel comes up with stunts that really have a great story edge to them. Each character we've set a tone for on how we want the action or the fights to look. Sarah's going to be very militant about her fights. She's going to know a lot of combat techniques and be able to take people down. Summer Glaupeng Cameron, you know, she was a nationally ranked ballet dancer, so Summer thinks very linear with things. When I'm training with Summer, whether it's a fight or a stunt, I walk her through the paces, and she picks it like a dance. I can show Summer something once, and she's got it. In a television situation, you're going to have wonderful action as long as you plan it out. There was the fight that took place in Sarah Connor's house between the two Terminators. So instead of making it a right, left, hit, punch fight, it was more of shooting, grabbing, and throwing themselves through counters, through walls, through floors. I mean, things that you can stretch it to the fact, OK, these are four and 500 pound machines that can get away with this. The architecture of how we're shooting this series is completely reflective of what Jim Cameron did in the first two films. And you cannot do a Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles show without visual effects. The most important part of visual effects is the fact they need to be seamless. The scope of this show is pretty ambitious for television. We have these amazing scripts that are written like features with a tremendous amount of visual effects and a tremendous amount of scope. And on the other hand, we're on a TV schedule and on a TV budget. And so what does that mean? Well, it means it's 24-7. Okay, so this is the TAAA. It is a completely upgraded and modified, improved version of the Terminator Endo series. This is a bipedal combat chassis. Um, it's basically a two-legged tank. And this is the reason why it's called a AAA. One, two, three processors. It's a triple core. So if this one gets whacked, and this one gets whacked, there's still one hard drive that can run the system. Very militaristic. So the military builds things. It's always redundant. You always have a backup. The biggest challenge in designing the new Terminators was to honor the design in the first Terminator, the Terminator was kind of a bodybuilder. It was a very big, brutish, you know, industrial revolution, battering ram Terminator. Our Terminator is much more upgraded, much more refined, has a little bit more kung fu move, but still has that Terminator vibe. It's still a machine. So the challenge was to upgrade this design, but not lose what worked and what is so perfect about the design. So it was a very delicate balance of upgrading and also not losing what was essentially perfect in its original incarnation. I think this series is going to satisfy fans of Terminator by bringing Sarah Connor back. I think people miss Sarah Connor, and they rightly should. She's a fantastic character. I'm really excited by the fact that all the pieces came together for the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to keep a visual integrity. It is like a ride every week. We have amazing stunts. We have amazing visual effects, and the actors are really dedicated. No one has ever seen anything like this on television before. This level of action is high for a blockbuster movie. And it being a weekly series is a revolution. Ah!